and let's jump into what setting up a new campaign looks like. This is the page that Apple has for setting up a campaign. Notice one very important thing, advanced. We're not in basic because in basic, you don't really have any real settings. I'm actually gonna pick the App Figures app. And here is your first decision. You have to choose what type of campaign you want. We're gonna focus on search results because that is where you would get most of the intent. And again, our goal is to optimize so the right people get to see your ad and the right people are the people who need your app. And with that, we're gonna choose a region. Now, you might be thinking, I wanna do all the world, everywhere where people can download my app. You definitely don't wanna do that because every country and every society has its own different sets of how to optimize and how to localize for that. Now, if your app is localized for a bunch of different regions, you can cater to more than a single region. I would say if you do that, do that on a per country basis, meaning have multiple campaigns for multiple countries. So for here, I'm not gonna choose all the countries. I'm just gonna choose the US because that's what I'm focused on. I have in the past used multiple countries that speak the same language. That might seem like a good idea, but in the grand scheme of things, it isn't because every country behaves just a little bit differently, even the keywords you would select. And if you're selecting keywords that are for the UK and the US at the same time, that means the UK keywords are also going to be competitive on the US market and you may not get as many downloads. And keep in mind, every time your app is visible and every time someone taps it, that cost per tap number that we're gonna be setting very soon is going to be hit and you're gonna lose that money. Let's continue here. And here's another thing, your daily budget. Now your daily budget is something you can change your daily budget should not come necessarily from what you think competitors are doing or anyone else is doing. It should come from what you want to spend. I always multiply the daily budget by 30 because that's really the amount of money that you will be spending on that. So if you don't wanna spend more than 500 bucks, $10 a day is gonna get you very close to that because 10 times 30, 300. Always think about it in monthly terms. I'm gonna send my campaign to $50. Per day, there are techniques to figure out what's the right daily budget off of competitors. There's no easy tool to do that, not in Apple search ads, of course. That's something we're working on, actually. Once it's ready, I'll show you how to do that. Another thing that is really, really important is negative keywords. We're not gonna set them up here, but we're going to set them up in the next step. And I'll explain what negative keywords mean and how negative keywords helped us save a bunch of money. But before that, start and end dates. I used to always set start and end dates because I always want to be in control of my campaigns. And you can always go in and change that. But on the Apple side of things, I don't really think you need it. If you are trying to learn how to do this, if you are trying to optimize an existing campaign, ending it is not an optimization. Ending it is kind of an exit. So I don't really worry about that unless you know that you're doing something very, very specific time-wise. Now, ad groups. When I first started running campaigns, ad groups really, really confused me because what's the difference between an ad group and a campaign? Shouldn't a campaign just be the whole thing? And the answer is kind of, if you want to get really organized and you have a lot of keywords and you want to do multiple keywords that share the same type of campaign, you could create multiple ad groups in one campaign. I don't know many people who do that. So we're just gonna have the one ad group. Now I'm gonna set my maximum CPT cost per tap to $1. I know Apple is saying four. It's in Apple's benefit to push you to do more keywords and more broad matches and pay more money. I don't really think that's one of those really important things to pay attention to yet. Now, search match. And for search match, I'm gonna pull up Apple's documentation because they say it better than I do and hopefully you'll understand what I mean. Oh you have to turn this off. Understand search match, that's from Apple's documentation. Appear for queries without adding keywords to your search results campaign. How is Apple gonna know what's the best for me? And you're saying it's Apple, they have AI and chat GPT and magic. None of that is actually going to save you money. So if you want to make sure that your money is actually well spent on these ads, turn off any sort of automations that Apple might offer you. This is the worst one. And for some reason, Apple turns this on and hides all the other targeting features. This feature says, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. From everything that I've seen, when they try to figure it out, they usually get you in front of people that are completely irrelevant to you. So we're not gonna do that. Turn it off. And if you're thinking, wow, this is getting really complicated, I'm gonna have to figure out keywords. I'm gonna have to figure out age ranges and demographics and devices. The answer is yes. It's not that difficult. It takes just a little bit of time. But in addition to targeting and focusing your campaign and not throwing away money, it also gives you something to experiment and iterate over. Now, keywords, this is the core of any campaign. What we want to do is, you want to click on here, and here's where everything becomes interesting. Apple will attempt to find keywords that are relevant for us. ASO, definitely relevant. Analytics, definitely relevant. Hootsuite, not at all relevant. Social media management, not at all relevant. So if we had left 
search match on, we'd probably be paying for these keywords, which mean for the App Figures app, nothing. App Figures doesn't do social media management, and App Figures does not compete with Hootsuite. As you continue to go through this, you see that I want to say a good 80 to 90% of these keywords are totally irrelevant. And we're going to walk through how to make sure that we don't get ranked for those keywords because Apple will try anyway. Here you have a few options, and your few options are to add keywords. So let's say we want to do App Analytics. We're gonna add that. So now we have our Max CPT set and you see that you can change it and you have a match type. Apple should not turn the match type to broad by default. Broad means that it's app analytics or app or analytics or really something that feels similar using the language models. This means that we're gonna spend a lot of money on stuff that even though this keyword seems very relevant to us, we're gonna get a bunch of, a bunch of hits from things that have to do with either apps, not app analytics or analytics that have nothing to do with apps. And that's what happened to us when I first started with Apple search ads, we would get hits for social media management and Instagram analytics and all these things. And the other thing is, those are really expensive keywords because competition on Instagram, way more expensive than competition on apps. We had to pay that because we wanted to compete, not knowing that they would place us in the wrong keyword. So always, always turn your keywords to exact match. There are a whole bunch of different techniques to figuring out which keywords you should be adding. I'm gonna go through that very, very quickly with one of my favorite tools, and that's going to be the competitor's keywords report in app figures. If you go into the competitors keywords report, you'll see that you can set up any competitors from all of those competitors, you're going to get all of the keywords that they have. That will allow you to see what sort of keywords they're targeting, maybe new ideas, maybe things that can help you understand how you can get to keywords. Those are all keywords that you will find them optimizing for organically through app store optimization, through their name, through their subtitle on the App Store. They're not gonna be the keywords they bid on. We're also building a view that will give you an idea of what keywords they're paying money for, but ultimately, if you think about intent, it's not just about the paid intent, it's about intent in general. So you want to take from the name, from the subtitle, more than you wanna take from what they're paying for. What they're paying for might be interesting, but what the algorithm sees them as, that's really where the key to all of this is. Now, negative keywords. So I'm gonna make sure that we don't get shown for anything that has to do Instagram because we really don't do much with Instagram. I'm gonna set this one to broad because I don't really want anything Instagram related. I don't want Instagram analytics or analytics for Instagram or followers for Instagram. And Apple is so easily swayed by these things. So they will expand everything. That's really a problem and you should always be mindful of that. So always pick your keywords with exact match and add negative keywords. I also know that social media is something that Apple will attempt to do for us. Now for social media, I am going to do an exact match because it's two words and I don't know what the algorithm is going to do. I don't necessarily want to throw away some of that traffic. Make sure you add as many negative keywords as you can because Ultimately, it's easier to remove a negative keyword and spend more money than to get your money back from Apple for a tap that did nothing for you. Actually, you can't get your money back. So let's continue. The audience is a very, very interesting tab as well. So reach all eligible users means literally anyone who's in the App Store. They could be your existing users. They could be users that already had your app. I always, always choose specific audiences because I want to know who I'm targeting. And again, that goes back to I want to be able to experiment. We're gonna start with devices. This is a really easy one. This gives you the ability to select if your app is on multiple devices. Our app is made for iPhone, so we don't really have any options. Customer types, here you have a few options. And these options are a little bit tricky and they make the tracking a little bit tricky. All users means literally all users, anyone who's in the app store. I don't think you really want that in most cases. Now there are some branded campaigns where you just want people to see the name of your app, even if they're not gonna download it. That's how you throw money away and you do that if you're a big brand that just wants that brand recognition. If you're trying to save your money and stretch your dollars, you wanna go for new users. New users means exactly what it sounds like, users who have never used your app. Now, the language for these is kind of interesting. Users of my other apps also means exactly what you think. They have one of your apps if you have multiple apps, which is really, really cool. If you already have that sort of brand recognition, this should be one of the most optimized campaigns with the highest conversion rate. If you have a campaign that targets your other users and you have enough users in that group. I believe Apple says you need to have at least 5,000 users in that group for that to work. That could be really, really good. I'm gonna skip that because it's not the main use case for most apps. We only have the one app and even if we release other apps, I'm not gonna try and do that. I would much rather target newer users and use my own apps to push more traffic to my apps. This is kind of tricky. 
So returning users, if you read the documentation, returning user says that it's anyone who had your app in the past or has your app on a different device. But if you continue reading the documentation, it also says that it could be users that have your app. I'm not entirely sure if that's a mistake. I've, I've caught mistakes in the documentation before, but the really interesting bit here is if you're tracking this, these are not gonna count as downloads because they're returning users. And if you have tracked your analytics for more than two minutes, you know that returning users will count as a re-download. So if you're doing any sort of tracking and you're paying money for these ads and you're not seeing new downloads and you have this customer type selected, that's exactly why. I don't really see a lot of use for this. Of course there is use for this, but it's very, very niche and very specific. I would much rather not use it. We're gonna go for new users, which is what I think will give us the most bang for our buck. And we're gonna drop down to demographics. Now, thinking of the genders and the age ranges of apps, especially when you don't know these uh, pieces of data might be really challenging. Now, there aren't that many options. There are male and female. And for ages, we have what looks like every group. There's a little bit of a quirk here. This is not an age range. This is just a number. But once you select one, it will give you another one. What I always do is I always aim to understand who I'm targeting and it's better to narrow your targeting and expand it later than to have it too broad. And when it's too broad, you're losing money on people who will see your app that don't need it. It's very difficult to decide on genders. I know for me at least, but there are apps that are more targeted towards males or females. And so if you have that sort of app, it would be very beneficial to target it. Again, you can always untarget and continue from there. It's also one of those things that you probably don't know about your app because there's no easy way to look it up, but we are working on something as well that uses some AI to figure that out, to give you an idea of who's using your app. And you can see that for your competitors and you can learn from that and potentially also optimize those campaigns a little bit better. Age is a lot different because age is likely something you know or likely something you can expect. When I do advertising, I don't go too young because that's not gonna help with analytics. Most people who are thinking about their app as a business are not gonna be too young. Now, there might be people there that I'm overlooking when I do this, but for the most part, it's not gonna be them. I don't wanna lose that money. Same thing with higher age ranges. For example, news apps, you wanna cater to a higher age group, or if you're trying to change how news apps are, like some apps are trying to do these days, you wanna only target the lower end of age. Think about what that means for you and find the right age. And again, keep in mind, it's better to focus your app too much in the beginning and then broaden it because that means you're not wasting money and you're getting results and slowly broaden it. Locations are subset of the region you selected. We selected the US. So if we do want to show it in a specific city or in a specific state, we can do that too. It doesn't really make sense for the app figures app to be siloed to a specific state or city, but there are many apps where this actually does make sense. If you have an app that's local or you have an app that's not catering to all locations, a lot of the food delivery apps from maybe four or five, six years ago that used to start in one region and go from there, start in a few cities, like the big cities like New York and Boston, they would use the location targeting to make sure that they're not showing up in rural Alabama and are not getting, or getting downloads, even worse, getting downloads and getting negative reviews, getting bad customer support because they don't work there. For me, not relevant, but we can use that if we need to. But ad scheduling, this is probably not something that I would say everyone should use, but if you wanna be really, really clever and really stretch your dollars, that's what I would use in conjunction with ASO. What you would do is you would go into your uh, keyword performance report for your most important keywords, the ones where hopefully you're also ranking in very well. When you look at, let's say the last 30 days or maybe last two weeks um, in hourly granularity, you will see that you probably go up and down, especially if you're number one or in the top five. For mo most apps, maybe that's not gonna be the case, but for some apps that is going to be the case, business apps, utilities, things that are needed during certain hours, awake hours, because we're now siloed to a specific country that has probably one range of when it's daylight. And if you have that, every time you dip, you wanna augment that with Apple search ads. So you only do Apple search ads when your app dips in organic results. Um, that's very tinkery and there are many techniques to figure out how to do it because unless you have a perfect seasonality by day or by hour, it may not make sense, but also um, could be very, very useful. If you don't do it by hours, you can still do it by day. And so this is a really, really powerful feature. It's probably not for everyone. Ad creatives. Apple does give you the ability to use different screenshots when you do paid ads. So here we're just gonna go with the, the simple default, which means whatever graphics we show on the App Store page, and we're gonna hit create campaign. And boom, we're done, kind of. That's 
pretty much how you set up a campaign. And again, if you want the summary of everything is you want to target, you don't want automation, and you want to show it to the narrowest amount of people. And you can always expand, but if you start narrow, you will know a lot more. There's one more thing that a lot of people forget, and that is you want to also make sure that you track all of these results all the time. This is even more important than tracking App Store optimization keyword ranks because this is something that costs you money. And when you don't do it well enough, it just costs you money and that money goes away. And it doesn't matter if you're a big company or a small company or an indie, money is money and you wanna keep it and you want it to do more for you. If you could get two downloads for the price of one, would you do it? If you can pay half and get the same number of downloads, would you do it? All those are possible when you do targeting. And targeting means tracking. So. In Apple search ads, you can track which keywords are giving you most money. You can track how money is translating into downloads. I know a lot of developers don't do it because Apple made it just a little bit tricky, but if you head into app figures, there is a very simple view where you can overlay your downloads and you can overlay your spend or really any of the metrics that we track from Apple search ads. And you should do that for all of those because that will give you a really good understanding of how your ad spend is actually changing your trends. Hopefully you learned something new. If you did, give this video a like and now consider subscribing to the channel. See you all later.